Hi, I'm Wes Chamberlain of the Philadelphia Phillies. Get ready to take a walk on the lighter side. That's right, Wes. We are going to take a walk on the lighter side of baseball. Take me out to the ball game. Hi everyone, I'm Jay Johnstone and over the course of the next half hour, the lighter side of baseball will show you some of the crazier moments that have happened in this game. We've traveled all the way from the big yards right on down to the backyards and have collected plenty of those fabulous follies and even pulled an outrageous prank or two. So come on and join me as this tape starts off for the bang. A royal bang, that is, with Steve Crawford, relief pitcher for Kansas City. It was only flesh powder, Steve. Butler of the L.A. Dodgers decided to teach his son the fundamentals of hitting, so he took him out back for a few drills. Obviously, this little guy already has a pretty good swing. Yeah, there are a lot of crazy things that occur in the game of baseball, and on any given night, you never know what you might see at the ballpark. Especially if, on that particular night, there's a full moon out. Take, for example, our disgruntled manager here, who, after getting tossed out of the game, decided to shove his shoe in the ump's face. Smell this! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna toss you out of the game! Nice strategy. And this guy's still not done. Off go the glasses. Here's another guy who's just a little upset. First, he tosses the water cooler. And then the trash can. Not to be outdone, this manager decides to hand deliver the trash can to the infield. Nice touch. Ah, the national pastime, a sport you can bring the whole family to. In fact, bring everyone you know. Friends, neighbors, co-workers, people from church, the dog, the cat, the bird. You know, throughout my career as a Major League Baseball player, I had a reputation of being uh, a prankster. And yes, I will admit, I, I was addicted to pranks, and I still am. In fact, whenever I get the chance, I love to pull a prank. And sometimes I'll even get an accomplice. So for this one, I got Sparky Anderson, the manager of the Detroit Tiger, to help me out. Wait till you see what we do to this poor Tiger player. Good old Sparky has called Tigers player Tim Leeper into his office to discuss a newspaper article that quotes Leeper as bad-mouthing Sparky. Of course, the paper and the quotes in the article are both phony. Let's listen in. Now, I pick up a newspaper article that says, Trouble in Tigerstown. Rookie outfielder stirs controversy in camp. Some of your quotes in there. He also quoted Leeper as saying, Sparky is an old racehorse with blinkers. He has tunnel vision when he's out on the field and doesn't give a lot of young players a chance to prove themselves. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something. There's no text in this? Yeah, it says right here. I'm reading them right to you. Who the f*** is Bruce Cassetta? Sparky, I'll tell you right now. I never f***ing talked to somebody. Sit down, sit down. You know, uh... This is... I never talked to nobody. Uh, let me do the talking. Let me do the talking. 
You know, I got, I got, I'll do the talking. You do, I, 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 you just step up. I'll do the talking. And first Look of at all, Jay. He loves it. To do here. Meanwhile, when poor Leeper keeps getting like more that. and more fired well, up. And Sparky's excited. just about ready to call in the writer the of this bogus article, our actor that, uh, Bruce Casella. Hey, it's Bruce Casella. Here's the writer. I'm going to find out here. Come in here. I'm going to find out. Bruce, come on in here. Yes, I want to know, Leap is denying this emphatically, I want to know exactly, exactly where you got this type of stuff. Well, uh, I, I really can't tell you. Uh, what do you mean you can't tell? Let me ask you a question. Sure. Who the f*** are you? Hey, hey, well, I'm a reporter. I'm a reporter. You're a f***ing writer or something like that. Wait, 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 let wait, the man, hey, 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 you just let the man do the talking. I got that from from one of your veteran players, and I just really can't say who I got it from. Because well, I'll tell you what, now, wait, 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 I'll do the talking. I have to know who the player is. There's no way, I'll, I'll, I'll do the talking. I've got it right on tape here, Spark. You got it, let me hear this. I'm going to camp right now. Uh, it's not going too bad. You know, Tim Lieber's having a pretty good spring. Sounds like Mark Sauer. You know, it is. Let me get Mark Sauer. Where is Mark Sauer? I can't believe you write something on the basis of that. I want Mark Salas. Uh, no, not right now. You know, there's a reason for these younger kids. Well, let's just get Mark Salas in here. And shake your hand. You know that. Oh, we'll get Mark Salas in here. Mark, now listen, I want to know something. I want to know something. Mark, you know what? Let's get Mark Salas in here. Now, when Leaper's teammate Mark Salas comes into the office, Sparky just can't keep a straight face any longer, and Leaper finally knows the joke's on him. This is a predicament that's got me awful. I, I am so upset. Come on, it's been f***ing or what? Come here, come here. Jimmy Johnstone's right out there. You, you've been a victim of... We a got you, Timmy boy. You got a little heated with the reporter, our producer, Bruce Casale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I asked him who he was, you know, in real nice terms. And, uh, well, I'll ask you a question. Sure. Who the f*** are you? Hey, hey. Well, I'm a reporter. I'm a reporter. What was going through your mind? Well, I saw myself carrying bags at Marriott <laughs> for the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, I was doing that about three weeks ago, and I was on my way back. <laughs> Nothing like seeing a good prank pulled off to perfection. Nice job, Sparky. Now, from one legendary manager, let's move on to another one. Tommy Lasorda of the Los Angeles Dodgers tells a classic story involving yours truly and a few Dodger teammates. I look up in the sixth inning, and the, and the ground crew is dragging the infield. Mm -hmm. And on the board, they show there's 50,000 people in Dodger Stadium. And three guys are in coveralls dragging the infield. It's you, Jerry Royce, and Cameron Brett. 50,000 people get up and give you a standing ovation. I did a good job. <laughs> now, all three of you come in the dugout. I find each, each of you $250. I told you to get a bat and pinch hit for the pitcher. The first pitch you hit over the right field fence for a home run. You may be the only guy in the history of the major leagues who on the sixth inning, the top of the sixth inning, dragged the <laughs> and the bottom of the sixth inning hit a home run. It won the game, too. It won the game. Now, after I find you, you fellas told Bud Farilla what I had done. Bud Farilla had a talk show in Los Angeles. So he tells the fans, how could Tommy Lasorda find these three guys? for what they did, the fans are up in arms. The fans are sending in money to help you guys pay the fine. You each receive $750. You give me $250, you guys clear $500. I'm the culprit, and you three guys are the heroes. Okay, here's another one of those bizarre baseball stories that took place in between innings. The ballpark was McCoy Stadium in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, home of the Pawtucket Red Sox. And here, WJAR sportscaster Joe Rocco was trying to do a live report on the field. But there was a problem. 
You see, the game was ready to resume, and Rocco wasn't finished with his sports cast yet. So you'd think they'd wait a few minutes, right? Wrong. The umpires didn't care at all that this was a live report. All they wanted to do was continue with the game. He's raping a 31-year-old New York woman. Holding up the game for this. We're not holding up the game. Live TV, sir. Fine. Okay. Show the game. We'll be 30 seconds. No. We're not holding up the game. All right. The umpires are giving us a little heat here. Okay. We'll be done in about 30 seconds. No, you won't. You'll be done now. Okay. I'm gonna get thrown out here on opening night. They're calling. All right, they're cutting the lights. We got to go. Uh, they want us out of here. Live at McCoy, I'm Joe Rucker. Kathy and Doug, take yeah, it away before they throw me out. That's the reason, the beauty of live television, isn't it? You got to love those umpires. And you're going to love this next play. It took place in a baseball stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. And without question, it's one of those once-in-a-lifetime sports moments. When Jed Dalton of the University of Nebraska stepped to the play, he thought this was going to be just another at bat. But boy, was he wrong. Because Jed not only hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he also managed to hit it right through the window of a car that was passing by the stadium. I knew I hit it hard, but I didn't. I thought it was on the line too much to get out of the park. So I was on my, on my horse trying to get around and get a double or triple out of it and just left the park. I didn't even know it shattered the window until I got, I crossed home plate, came in. And I looked out there and I guess I saw the car with the shattered windshield, so it was still pretty exciting. Yeah, pretty exciting for Jed, but not for the guy who was driving the car who luckily didn't have a passenger with him. I usually don't go down that road. I usually go down 14. There was a train coming, so I went around the other way. All I was doing was just driving by, and uh, all of a sudden I heard a crash. <laughs> the hard balls went through my window. And it kind of scared me a little bit. So I just sat there for a little while, and, and I heard... One of the players asked me if I was all right. And I got out of my car and said, yeah, I'm okay. So you're going to keep this baseball now? Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to find out who hit it. And take it down and have him autograph it. <laughs> and so, what would be the next logical part to our story? You guessed it. Robert had the chance to meet Jed Dalton at the ballpark and had him autograph that historic baseball. As Jay said at the beginning, this was definitely one of those once-in-a-lifetime sports moments. And what's Robert going to do with that glass-shattering baseball? Get up on it right on the front of my car. <laughs> <laughs> the lighter side of baseball moves on. And if you're superstitious, you'll love this next guy. His name is Turk Wendell, a minor league pitcher who used to be with the Atlanta Braves, but now is with the Cubs. Turk is a powerful right-hander with plenty of crazy habits, like always running off the field and making sure he never touches the foul line. And he'll only take a ball from an umpire if it's rolled to him and won't pick it up until it stops completely. He wears no socks, only stirrups. And during the game, he goes through at least two packs of black licorice. Wendell also has plenty more rituals he likes to perform. I uh, kneel down, get the ball, wait for the catcher to, to uh, come. And when he goes to kneel down to catch, I stand up, throw my one of my pitches. Uh, then I get the ball, he throws it second, get the ball, tray, draw three crosses in the dirt, and then uh, go about my, my business. You know, after that, I'm just, I'm a normal pitcher like anybody else. Yeah, no different than anyone else. How many pitchers do you know who brush their teeth between innings? You heard right. Between every inning, Turk comes into the dugout, breaks out the toothpaste, and polishes up those shiny whites. This 24-year-old is one promising minor leaguer with some major league superstitions. Diamonds in the rough are what we like to call this next group of plays because the skills of these ball players certainly could use a little bit of polish. Don't worry, folks, he was okay. Another player who could use plenty of pledge is this right fielder. There's error number one. And here comes error number two. Number three. And on play number four, he finally makes the catch. But pays for it dearly, as does this pitcher who gets beamed by the catcher. Nice arm, pal. Or our hitter here who gets it right where it hurts. 
And our last diamond in the rough, who has a little trouble with his... Slider. Hey, buddy, better work on those control problems. Ah, seventh and stretch. Let's take time out from the bloopers as we listen to this rocking rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, sung by my little buddy Frank. Take it away, pal. Take, the, take me out to a ball game. Take me out to a prayer. Buy some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't have it. I ever get back for it. Ooh, for a home tea, a maple, and it's a chain. Cause it's one, two, three, go down at the old ball game. Now that the little guy has got us back in the baseball mood, let's drop everything and run out to the ballpark for plenty more fun. There's nothing like going out to your favorite stadium and watching the stars in action. Oh, picture me pitching you kisses when the morning train is due. And when day is done, if it's raining, hun, I'll come sliding back to you. Oh, you better play ball with me. What a manager you could be. Let's give love a plow, honey, don't hold out. You better play ball with me, yeah. Soft ball, hard ball, stick ball, knuckle ball, spit ball, grease ball. You better play ball with me. Okay, let's get back to one of my favorite pastimes. No, not baseball. Come on. I already told you what I like to do more than anything else, pranks. So for this one, I paid a visit to spring training to scare the daylights out of a few of my baseball buddies. Mongoose mania is what we like to call this prank. Down in spring training, while the players were hard at work, loosening up, and preparing for the upcoming season, good old Jay was hard at work preparing for his upcoming caper. This year, Jay has brought his Cobra Killer to spring training, traveling from camp to camp, showing players and coaches this extremely wild and dangerous animal. He's told these curious onlookers that there's an African mongoose inside the cage. However, the only killer inside that box is a furry little tail tied to a string, which is about to scare the daylights out of Cardinals player Brian Jordan. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Come on. A nasty little sucker. Boy, it really is. Every now and then, it'll snap at you, huh? Oh, <laughs> Don't worry, Brian. You're not the only one Jay got with this trick. <laughs> There they go, there they go, and we want the world to know. Give a cheer, shout it clear, let them know that we're all here. That bunch of Cardinals and Mr. Humphrey, we're mighty proud of you. We got another one. We sure do, Jay. Another story about you as we go back to Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda and listen to how he describes our host, Jay Johnstone. Wherever I go, and you know, I do an awful lot of speaking all over the United States, and one of the questions that is asked of me so many times, what is Jay Johnstone really like? And my answer is that there are a lot of people who are in the insane asylum who are saner than this man, this guy, guy is walking the streets of America scot-free. <laughs> now one from our strange but true baseball file. This one took place in Rochester, New York, our home of the Rochester Red Wings, where two of their players, Shane Turner, number seven, and Tommy Shields, number 19, attempted to enter the baseball record book, but first they had to get the okay from their skipper. 
they proposed it yesterday. They said if we clinched uh, second place, could we try uh, getting two guys to play nine positions in, in one game? And I think it'd be a record. And I said, sure, but let's clinch it first. So uh, they went out there last night. It took us 11 innings, but we finally clinched it. So we're going to give it a go, go today. And give it a go, they did. Each inning, these two guys moved to a different position, whether it be third base, second base, shortstop, and even pitching. There was one position that Tommy wasn't looking forward to playing. I caught, uh, I think the last time I caught was when I was nine years old. So uh, I'm, I'm not real excited about it. But he wanted that record, so he did it anyway. And somehow these two guys managed to play all nine positions in one ball game, which in turn secured them a place in the baseball record book at our strange but true file. Recently, our lighter side of baseball crew took a trip to Fort Myers, Florida, where they met up with one of the more interesting characters in professional baseball. He's the king of promotions, and when this guy's in charge, you never know what you might see at the old ballpark. How would you like to go out to a ball game and see a golden retriever in right field? Get your hair cut in left field. Make a free phone call from the stands. And be placed in seats where you were encouraged to heckle the umpires. Sound good? Well, these were just a few of the sights we saw when we visited The Miracles, a professional baseball team in Fort Myers, Florida. And the person responsible for all these promotions is the president of The Miracles, Mike Veck, a guy who is self-proclaimed crazy. I would like to think that I'm very rational but crazy. It's an oxymoron, and I tend more to the moron side than the oxy side, but uh, I just love what I do. And so do the fans, especially when you bring characters like Morticia out to clean off home plate with a vacuum during the seventh inning stretch. Or when you set up a beauty salon that sits right behind the third base bag. Vex says it doesn't get any better than this. You take the worst thing in the world, which is getting your hair cut, and you take the best thing in the world, which is a ball game, you combine them and bingo, you've got something that doesn't make any sense. Tailor made for me. And so was the Blue Review, a special section where fans sit and critique the umpires. Hey, Blue! German Shepherd in the parking lot looking for you! You're missing a good game, Blue! Use the good eye! Now, if you think anyone can do this, you're wrong. Just ask these fellas. No, no way. No, no. You gotta have etiquette. You can't be completely mindless, I... Another fan favorite is the cellular phone in the stands. Hey, lady, who you calling? Oh, she scared me to death. Sorry, ma'am. We didn't mean to scare you. Just wanted to know who you were calling. My son. See if he's home. Checking up on him? He's 17. I always check up on him. And probably the most famous of all Vex promotions is Jericho, the miracle dog. Jericho's job is to keep the fans happy by signing autographs during the game and to keep the umpires happy by providing them with Gatorade in between innings. Good stuff. There you go, Jericho. Take your back now. Miracle Baseball, a place where everyone has fun, including the team president. It's, it, it's criminal. I have more fun every year. I'm 41 years old with a job that I'm underqualified for uh, simply because my mentality hasn't reached the age of five yet. And that's why we love you, Mike. Now that's my kind of ballpark. I would have fit in great down there, wig and all. Oh yeah, the wig. You probably didn't recognize me, but don't worry about it. Neither did any of these next guys when I showed up at Yankee Stadium wearing this wig and pulled off what I call my Shakespearean prank. Yankee Stadium, home of the Bronx Bombers and home of Sergio, the big Hollywood director who's come to New York to find a ball player to appear in his next Broadway show. These guys think they're auditioning for a part in the play Hamlet, reading lines from these cue cards. They also think if they land the deal, big money awaits them. Let's listen in on the auditions. Go ahead. Beautiful. God bless you, sir. My lord, the queen. 
Dave Gallagher starts laughing right away. Mark Eichhorn, on the other hand, is all business. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or take arms against the sea of troubles. Proud of yourself, Mark? Back to Gallagher, who just keeps on laughing. By the mass, and tis like a camel indeed. Me think it is like a weasel. <laughs> I tell you what, I read Hamlet in high school, and they never said any of this. <laughs> Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo? Good, good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> I got a little accent in there, too. That's great, Mark, but it's time to end this prank and have Jay let you off the hook. With Jay Johnstone. <laughs> 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 you guys are crazy. Oh, no, I'm going, that can't be his real hair over here. <laughs> I'm going to wait for you for two hours in this outfit. I'm dying. I'm dying. Look at this. Look at this thing you got to wear. I was going to say this guy. To be or not to be. <laughs> As you can see, I love to have a good time. And I've learned that through the years, the best way to enjoy this great game of baseball is to keep your sunny side up. Keep your sunny side up. Up by the side that gets blue. If you have nine suns in a row, baseball team make money you know keep your winning side up up help the team to come Bird, through then your name they'll show all the sporting news keep your sunny side up win the all-star game make the hall of fame keep your sunny side give the ball the right keep your sunny side up well, folks, that's it for this tape. I sure enjoyed watching those clips, and I hope you did, too. Until next time, remember, look on the lighter side of life, and we'll see you at the old ballpark. You're going to win that ball game, Uncle Sam. So pitch that cannonball the way you can. You were slow beginning, but just wait till that ninth inning. You can finish what they all began. Your team is all behind you to the man. So keep your bat and make that home run slam. Keep the bases loaded till your hits have all exploded. You're gonna win that ball game, Uncle Sam. Show the axis how we play. In the good old U.S. way You're gonna win that ball game, Uncle Sam